So last weekend, we talked about joy. It is in the title, Journey to Joy. We talked about the joy of the Lord and how it's our strength and how joy is directly connected to the heart of God. We also unpacked happiness and the misconception that joy and happiness are the same thing. And sometimes in marketing or communication with different ads, you're like, you can drink a Coca-Cola Classic. You can have joy and happiness. You're like, I don't know. Especially with all that recalls. I don't know. I don't know if you guys have seen it. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> don't Google it. It's okay. But happiness is directly connected to something that happens. Went to a restaurant this past week, and uh, it was, it's normally packed, and there's some people in front of me, and they were like trying to figure out what they want, and they looked back and they said, oh, hey, go ahead and go in front of us. And I said, I appreciate it, because they hadn't figured out what they were gonna eat yet. And so I'm standing there, and I'm kind of a regular, so I'm like, I'm gonna go ahead and order, and I overhear. Now, I don't know if there was manipulation involved. I don't know. But I overheard them. It was loud enough that I heard somebody say, that's my pastor. And he has a reputation of always buying the people behind him's meals. <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I'm literally mid-order, and I hear it, and I stop talking, and the girl's like, are you good, sir? I was like, yeah. <laughs> and I kind of glance back, and they're back there like, thank you. <laughs> like, thank you so much. Because I do have a little bit of a reputation of that, but I do put out like a limit on it. I'm like, I'll buy it if it's under 20, amen. <laughs> So I was like, hey, um, before I place my order, can I go ahead and get the people behind me's food as, as well? And they were super happy, I'll be honest. They, they walked by me later and they were like, you're the best. They gave me pistols, like, pew, 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 pew. And like, because they were happy because it was connected to something that happened. And I think they're a part of our Katy campus. <laughs> Unless you're in the room and you go to West Houston and I'm glad that you were blessed, amen. <laughs> glad you were blessed. But here's the reality, happiness again is directly connected to something that happens, which is why it can be a roller coaster, which is why they even say that a parent is as happiest as their saddest kid because happiness can happen or it can be frustrating. It can be a good day and it can be a Monday. It can be, and we ride this roller coaster instead of recognizing that joy, on the other hand, is again directly connected to a relationship with God because he is the source of joy. Say out loud, he is the source. He's the source of joy. So our anchor verse for week number two of the journey to joy is found in Romans 15, 13 on the screens at all campuses. May the God of hope fill you with all joy. Come on, somebody say all joy. And peace in believing through the experience of your faith that by the power of the Holy Spirit you will abound in hope and I love this word overflow with confidence in his promises. If you're taking down notes for week number two of the journey to joy, the title of today's message is He's Over It. He's Over It. Let's pray. God, I thank you today for ears to hear. God, I pray that if there's any hardened hearts or calluses, God, that keeps us from receiving this word today, God, I pray right now in a posture of humility, God, we position ourselves to hear you. We need a mind ready to understand it. And most importantly, God, we open up our hearts to receive your word today. If you receive it, shout amen. amen. There was a time in my, I would say in my 20s, my 30s, and maybe even in my now current early 40s that I attempted, and I think all of us at some point can relate to this statement, I attempted to handle everything in my own strength. Wave at me if that's you, come on, it's okay. I had this mindset, I guess you would say, I was over it, like I was in charge, I handled my business, I took care of my own time, my resources, my gifts, culture now would say, I bet on me, come on, I fully focused on what I could do, I was over all of it, at least that's what I thought. I was holding so tightly onto what God had given me that he couldn't use what was in my hands because I wasn't actually surrendering anything to him. Maybe with my words, like, God, I'm available to you, Lord, whatever you would ask, and he's like, I need you to give this away, and you're like, mm -mm, not this week, amen. You know, God, it's a tight week. I, <laughs> I was maybe good with my words, but I wasn't great with my actions, and then as I've, as I've grown, and here's the thing, we're all growing. None of us have arrived. If you think you've arrived, I would like to talk to you afterwards. Shake your hand and give you a trophy for being a liar. 
Because <laughs> nobody's arrived. We are all in a perpetual growth period of life. You've never arrived. Now, we grew a little bit more from yesterday, but we're not where we're gonna be a year from now. Come on, I'm growing every day. Come on, say out loud, I'm growing every day. But as I've grown in the Lord, I've realized that he's the only one who fully needs to be over all of it. If you've been around Hope City for any amount of time, you know that I love acronyms. Uh, week one of vision, I broke down the word gratitude. Some of you are like, what's an acronym? You take a word and you grab a letter from the spelling of the word and then you create other words. Some of you are like, that's complicated. Just, I like them. Okay, so today the word joy, J-O-Y, is spelled out like this. Jesus over your. Now, some of you are like, that's not, that's not complete. It's gonna make sense as we unpack it. To really unlock the journey of joy in life, you can take down notes. Let's start with this one. You have to be intentional to place Jesus over your family. You have to place Jesus over your family. You wanna walk out a journey of joy in life, you have to be intentional to place Jesus over your family. I love this scripture in Acts and I really want this to be said of my life, and I pray that you would connect to this series of verses, and you would say, I want this to be said over my family as well. Acts chapter 10, verse two. He and all of his family, now he can be interchangeable. It's a blanket statement. It could be she and all of her family, single mamas. He and all of his family were devout. That meant committed or devoted and God-fearing. To be God-fearing is to be in reverence and awe, to recognize that he is all-powerful. Come on, somebody. That we're devoted, that he is devoted. He and his family were devoted, committed. He gave generously to those in need and prayed to God regularly. Every single day, continually, spent time in the presence of God and You've been around church for any amount of time. You know Joshua 24, 15. But as for me and my family, come on, somebody say for me and my family. We will serve the Lord. Some of y'all are like, that's great. That's awesome. I love that you're just saying it. Jesus over your family, perfect. But how do we practically do this? So here's some practical ways that we do this in the Grove Psalm. And we, again, by no means have it all figured out. We have not yet perfected this. But this is part of our daily cadence and our daily rhythm. Number one, we turn worship music on at night. I've talked about this before, before we go to sleep. So we gather together as a family. Mama says, hey, Alexa. She turns it on, says, turn on, say, Elevation Worship. And the music starts filling our home. Our babies go to bed singing, I've witnessed your faithfulness. We're literally tucking in our kids. I've seen you breathe life within. So I will pour out my praise to you because you're worthy, God, you're worthy of all of it. Like we're singing. Our whole house is set up on the foundation of worship. That's one way we do it. The other way we do it is we discuss biblical character every day. Mama does the ABCs of character as she's driving the kids to school. She goes through, what's the A of character? And she walks through A to Z. Some of you are like, that's a lot. It's intentionality. It's a cadence. It's a rhythm of putting Jesus over our family. We pray together over every single meal. Some of you are like, well, that's a little legalistic. No, no, we thank God for the blessing of having a meal to eat. And then we do a rotation with our kids. We're like, hey, Fox, man, you pray. He's four. He's like, mm, uh, Jesus. And we're like, that's good, amen. Just say amen and let's, <laughs> let's eat the food, Fox, eh? Because <laughs> he'll, okay, like, I need a truck. <laughs> like, but this is a cadence that we've practiced. So now our kids at school, before they eat, my son, Brecken, will take his hat off. And he'll say, God, I thank you for this food. Thank you for mom's hands who prepared it, because it's never dead. <laughs> and God, I thank you, Lord, that you bless it, take sickness far from the midst of us, and bless all my friends. In Jesus' name, amen. Not ashamed. It's a cadence. It's a rhythm that we've established. We pray over our babies at night. We speak number six, verses 24, 26 over. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face to shine upon you. Be gracious to you. Turn his countenance towards you. May he give you, as you rest tonight, sweet sleep and peace. We pray it over our kids. We do family devotionals together. When we see an ambulance or a, or, or a, a, a police officer in a rush to get to an emergency situation, my kids will say, everybody stop, let's pray that God will intercept and inter, have an intervention in somebody's situation or their life. We, we're not just so busy in life that we don't go, ooh, glad it's not me, amen. And we pray together. And I saw somebody y'all like, well, y'all have a perfect little family, amazing. 
And why is your beard so sculptured? Is it fake? Like, no, no, this is a cadence that we have to be disciplined and intentional with every day. Just like you get up and brush your teeth, put on the odor, get ready for work. We do this every day. Here's another thing, parents. I need you to grab this. We serve as a family weekly here at God's house, here at Hope City. Parents, get your kids connected to the local church by them watching you serve and then in, in the domino effect of life, they, they themselves will wanna serve. We memorize the Bible together. We have a list of rules that we discuss often that are based on God's word. Here's another one, it's gonna step on some toes. We censor what comes into our home. Movies, shows, music, it all falls under the guidelines of does it honor God? Parents, let me speak to some parents and future parents. Some of y'all are like, I don't even have kids yet. This is a deposit for later. Guard your gates. Watch what comes into your home. What? You can clap. I'm telling you, this is a key. Some of y'all are like, well, I don't know why my kids are having so many night terrors and panic attacks, but you watch horror movies on the daily. I don't understand why I feel so synced up with the evil. So quit playing with Ouija boards. I'm not playing. Put guards. In. I'm stepping on somebody's toes. It's too early of a service. Y'all like, y'all gotta talk to the later crowd. They're the messy ones. They slept in. I woke up early. <laughs> They're the ones that were at the club. I'm in church. <laughs> we're not playing Ouija boards. That's them. I'm telling you, we have to guard our gates. What you put in your eyes what you watch with and what you put in your heart today will reflect out of your heart tomorrow. What you listen to, what you say, how you establish things. And don't be hypocritical. Don't watch something and then when your kids walk in the room, be like, hey, <laughs> you know. Uh, uh. No, Jackie and I are really, like, we, we are very intentional. If there's too much swearing, we turn that junk off. We look at all the reviews before we turn on a movie. Well, there's only seven sex scenes and some nudity. No, we're gonna turn that off. Because we don't want that to come into our house, we're gonna guard our gates. Some of y'all are looking at me like, ah, this is a little too Baptist, amen. <laughs> hey, listen, here's what I believe. I believe that God is reestablishing some things. He's realigning his church to his heart. But when he moves in his church, we're his church. Now we can reject it, or we can rise up and say, righteousness, holiness, character, integrity, and guarding my gates and putting boundaries in place. As for me and my house, come on, say it out loud, we will serve the Lord. All right, I'm gonna get off this subject, amen. The next step in our journey to joy, you have to be intentional. Number two, Jesus over your time. Some of you are like, do we have time for this one? Amen, I don't, I don't Here's a loaded question, how are you managing your time? And does your time honor Jesus? Because we only have so much of it here on this planet. Psalms 90, verse 12, David wrote these words in a song form. He says, teach us to realize the brevity of life. Brevity meaning the, the weight, not heaviness, but the, the, the urgency, the responsibility of life so that we may grow in wisdom. Ecclesiastes chapter three, verse 11 says this. He, God, has made everything beautiful and appropriate in its time. He has also planted eternity, a sense of divine purpose in the human heart, a mysterious longing which nothing under the sun can satisfy except God. Again, for me, these scriptures have a weight to them, not, not heaviness, not like I'm buckling under the, the weight of them. No, that weight feels like a responsibility. That weight feels like, am I making a difference right now? Did I make a difference in someone's life yesterday? Am I being the hands and feet of Jesus today? Do I believe I am, Matthew chapter five, verse 13, salt and light? When I walk into a room, does the atmosphere change? Am I making a difference right now or am I allowing the heaviness of life, the noise of life, the chaos of life, the frustrations of life to ruin my opportunities? Because watch this, with our time, you can either make excuses, you can make progress, you can't make both. I say this all the time, we have to be stronger than our strongest excuse. So let's talk about time management for a moment. Apple introduced a screen time feature, I've talked about this before. A screen time feature, I'm sure they have it on droids as well. And uh, I love that, every time I say it. <laughs> Anyways, I'm gonna leave that there. 
there is an opportunity to see, okay, th- wow, I've been spending a little too much time on my phone. Now, some of y'all are like, well, pastor, but I, I work on, from my phone. I work on my phone. But six hours on TikTok? Eee. No, you can see where your heart is by what you're directly connected to. I've shared this story before, but there was a story of an older gentleman. And if you've been around Hope City, you probably heard me tell it before. A gentleman who was sitting at a bus stop, and every day he would ride the bus, and a 20-something-year-old intern would ride the same bus. And that intern one day was intrigued, and he said, hey, sir. And the older gentleman said, yeah. He said, I'm, I've been noticing literally for like six weeks, every day I ride the same bus with you, and, and, and the older gentleman's towards the end of his career. He's in retirement, uh, uh, in the retirement journey now. And this young dude is starting out. And he said, sir, I noticed that you uh, read every day that we're sitting here. You're reading. And I actually have noticed, I'm so sorry, I'm not trying to be weird, but I've noticed it's kind of the, it's the same book. You've been reading the same book. Is it a really good book? And the gentleman said, well, it's, it is a good book. Uh, he said, but I, j- I just take my time. He said, if you notice, I, I read a little bit and then I look around and take a deep breath and I take, I take in what's around me. And he said, here's the truth, young man. I don't believe in killing time. I believe in making the most of every moment, experiencing the wonders of life. And at my age, I still want to embrace every moment because even if I'm old, I can still be growing. I can still be learning. I can make the most of my time. He said, and then as I'm growing, and this young guy's like, you are, you've grown a lot. Like, you are way older than me. And he says, watch this, though. I can pass my experiences on to people like you. And then I can pass them on to the next generation. It's like a domino effect. And the reason I love this story is this gentleman also loves acronyms. And he said, I love the acronym of the word time, things I must experience. And then as I grow... I get to pass those things on to somebody like you and tell you about things I experience, things I must experience every day. So this is my question. Are you trying to control every minute of your life? Because how you manage your time is directly connected to unlocking the purpose and the call of God on your life. How you manage your time with your family shows them how valuable they are. How you manage your time between work and relationships Determine how healthy those relationships end up. How you manage your time serving and being a part of what God is doing here at Hope City matters because it not only echoes to those around you that I'm doing this as under the Lord, but it also serves as an opportunity to reach somebody else far from God that not only impacts their now, but it impacts their eternity. Not only impacts their now, but it might impact their family's eternity. That's why 555 people, and that triple five is amazing, I, I, I'm so, I told Pastor Brandon, he texted me last night, I said, man, that we had over 500 people show up to serve other people in need. Is, you should clap. That's amazing. <laughs> that over 400 people were prayed for. That there's hope, and hope has a name, and its name is Jesus. It echoes not only now, but it reverberates into Eternity. So again, is Jesus over your time? Every week, whether it's me, Pastor Jackie, Pastor Brandon, a guest minister, we consistently communicate the importance of dedicating spiritual growth in connection with God. I said it last week. Some of y'all DM'd me and asked me, like, I couldn't remember all of them, so I'm gonna put it up on the screen today. The first 20 challenges, we close out the year. How many of y'all know about the first 20 challenge? I broke it down last week. I love it. The first... So the first five minutes every day, we're gonna be in the word. Every day, we're gonna be in the word. First five minutes in the word. Now the thing about being hungry and growing in God, this isn't enough. Meaning like, you'll be like, this is awesome. First 20, it's now the first 45. And now it's the first 60 minutes. So the first five minutes in the word, the next five minutes is in worship. When we're done with it, I want you to take a picture. The next one is five minutes in prayer. And then the last one is five minutes in remembrance. Remembering all that God has done. I said this last week. I feel like a lot of times in 
our modern Christianity, it's not that we don't, it's not that we have a faith problem, we have a, we have a remembering problem, remembering all that God has done. Five minutes in the word, five minutes in prayer, five minutes in worship, five minutes simply remembering all that God has done because the chasm you're in front of right now that the enemy is saying this is gonna be the thing that ruins your life and messes you over and you're gonna go broke as a joke and you're gonna end up just like everybody else in your family, you can say, oh, ooh, ooh, but devil, <laughs> Before I resist you, let me remind you of everything that God has done, where he's been faithful, where he's completed what he started, where his promises didn't have expiration dates on them, in the word, in prayer, in worship, in remembrance. So every single week, we wanna give you a deposit that says grow, be discipled, grow, in community, grow. And that's why every week we talk about connecting to the house of God. If you haven't already plugged in, immediately following every service, we have a thing called HC Connect. And we connect people to the house of God. You can clap, that's awesome. It's where you hear more about who we are, but it includes on how you can jump in and be a part, discover your purpose. Recognizing the purpose comes alive here. It sinks your heart up to the vision of the house. And then your next step is to jump on the dream team. Make some noise, dream team, come on. To serve in an area, watch this, that you're called to serve in. Because every single one of us have unique gifts and talents. We've been equipped by God. But are you sitting on the sidelines wondering if there's room for you? Look at the person next to you. Say, the answer is yes. Come on. So staying in the lane about Jesus over our time, we also talk about HC groups. We had over 2,200 in groups on the weekly this last semester. And as we step into the next semester, we're gonna have our freedom groups again, and we're gonna have chihuahua walking groups, and come on, we're gonna have hoop city basketball groups. Let's go. We're gonna have, co- y'all, we have, we have coffee groups. We have people that show up, and they, and they like swirl around, and it smells like earthy tones. I, I think a cat ran through this. Like, what is happening? We have all kinds of groups. Because we're a church that's large enough to serve a city, make an impact like we did yesterday. Over 5,000 toys given away. That's an army that made that happen, come on. But our groups make us small enough to know each other. Your know, time spent in community is so key to growth in our life. That's why we talk about all the time jumping in and serving. They said that there is a study by a secular organization that says those that served others that were less fortunate than them, depression rates dropped, suicidal ideology dropped, anxiety and panic attacks drop, to see the happiness on the faces of the dream team that showed up yesterday to bless those in need is a beautiful thing. So there's Hope City mission initiatives happening literally every single week. You can jump in and be a part. We do mission trips globally. We do mission trips in prisons. We do all kinds of things. And so if you're like, I just wonder if I can get involved, just show up. Literally, all you have to do is show up and be willing and get your yes out of the way, and God will use your life. Okay, moving forward, next step in our journey to joy, you have to be intentional to, number three, place Jesus over your resources. Jesus over your resources. Y'all, we have a responsibility from God to manage according to his will our time, our talents, and our resources. But it is a disciplined approach during the journey of life to allow God to be over your resources. And also understanding this, because this is the thing we don't like in our humanity. Yeah, but God, this is mine. But the truth is, it all belongs to him. The breath you breathe, yeah, that's his. The step you take, okay, that's, that's yours. <laughs> the resources, yeah, but you don't understand my job. No, no, that he's given you the power to get wealth, it's, it all belongs to him. It all belongs to him. And the moment that we recognize that all of this belongs to him, the faster we get in alignment with his heart and he can use us at a higher level. James 1.17 says this, every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights who does not change like the shifting shadows. Deuteronomy 8.18 says, remember the Lord your God. He is the one who gives you, watch this, the power to be successful. Now, you may be like over the top outgoing and be like, I can walk into any room. I'm only three calls away from reaching anybody. Like, and I get that. But he's the one that gives you the power and equips you to be successful. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 10 says, For God is the one who provides seed for the farmer and then bread to eat. I mentioned this last week. In the same way, he will provide and increase your resources and then provide a great harvest of generosity in you. It's a shifting of a mindset that says, 
Okay, so this doesn't belong to me. That's why I live open-handed, because it all belongs to you, O oh Lord, anyways. So this year, one of our main priorities has been the word stewardship. It's a very fancy Christian terminology. Stewardship. And we're very aware of the roller coaster in the current economy and inflation and interest rates. We're very aware of it. So our finance team, give it up for our finance team. Our CFO, Christy Walker, her entire team has been tirelessly diligent in crossing T's, dotting I's, cutting unnecessary expenses. And we've been using and filtering everything, the word stewardship. This is what stewardship means. It says using God-given abilities to manage God-given resources to accomplish God-ordained results. And some of you can disconnect from that and say, well, I'm glad you do that as a church. No, this applies to our own lives. This is something that you should be applying and practicing every day. My wife and I have a zero-based budget, and what it means is it's an every dollar has a name. So we attach everything that we have to something specifically. So this $70 is already designated. So if there is not this designated, then, then we, we're not gonna do it. Every dollar has a name. And so as we look at stewardship, one thing that has become an American epidemic because of the economy is we end up running up credit cards. We don't have a budget. You're just burning through money because you're trying to keep up with culture and friends. But I need those nails, okay. Then you need to pause. Some ladies were like, <laughs> nothing wrong with them, amen. <laughs> if, you're not up, if you're not applying stewardship in your life, then you have to pause and say, God, help me with my resources. Some practical ways is seek counsel. Enroll in a money management program. Next year, here at Hope City at our headquarters, we're gonna be launching a money management program to talk to people about budgets and how to steward better. Talk to someone who manages their own resources well so that they can give you advice. Don't let pride keep you from asking because statistically when you try to handle it on your own strength, you end up digging a hole so deep that you, can't, you don't feel like you can get out of it. Here's what I believe. I told our team this. I don't believe that our church has a struggle with generosity. It's not that we don't have a heart to give. I believe a lot of times it's tough because of how we've managed money. Maybe in your personal life, you're like, I wanna give, but the truth is, I'm not in a position to give. But when we allow God to be over our resources and we seek counsel and wisdom on it, I'm telling you, it takes the lid off of your ability to be generous with your time, your talent, and your treasures. And here's the truth. Again, it's all connected to the heart. Matthew 6, 21 says, wherever your treasure is, somebody like, well, I'm good, I don't have any treasures, I'm not a pirate. It says, <laughs> it says resources then the desires of your heart will be also. Here's a rule of thumb. Look at your spending patterns. This is what your heart's connected to. Some of y'all are like, snap, it's Chipotle and shopping. Like, <laughs> oh, that's Sephora and <laughs> sneakers. <laughs> now look at your spending patterns, and then you can see where your heart is connected to. We've been talking a lot about it. Towards our end of year here, we do our Hope for the House offering, and it's to help us wrap up 2023 strong. Recognizing that Jesus is over our resources is not about, this is the misconception. Another church, another pastor, just trying to get something from me. No, it's not about getting something from you. It's about God, because we're open-handed, getting something to you and through your heart. And I'm telling you, God will open up opportunities. Whether the manipulated at the restaurant, I just blessed them because they were like, he's always blessing people. Or it's you showing up and saying like, my friends Nick and Janae Stephanakis yesterday are, Oliver and Sydney, who showed up and said, what do we need? And we said, we're out of zero to two toys. And we have lines of hundreds of people still waiting. We're out of boys and girls, nine to 10 years old toys. And my buddy Nick and his nephews jumped in his truck and they drove to Walmart and bought as much stuff in the nine to 10 year old category as they could in their, on their own dime. Said, this is our acceptable generosity and our services unto the Lord. And I'm bragging on them for a minute because of the Holy Spirit in them. Then they came back and said, there's nothing left in the zero to twos? I said, no, and he said, come on boys, we gotta go. Went back to Walmart and literally bought everything that was on the shelves. And I said, I did say, hey, buy a Barbie doll, don't buy a Larby doll, you know what I mean? Like make sure it, <laughs> Larby, that's cool. And then we ran out again. 
We ran out again, so my, our friends Oliver and Sydney said, hey, we're gonna go to TJ Maxx. Come on, TJ Maxx, where you can get a shirt that doesn't fit, a bottle of olive oil you're never gonna use, and some toys, amen. You're like, I've always wanted these little crunchy, what are these things? I don't know, they're from England. Like, I'll buy them, like, TJ Maxx, amen. And they showed up with bags of zero to two for boy and girls' toys, books and rattles, and as soon as we put them down and put them in inventory, it was all gone. We had families waiting in need. It is the generosity of those who have said, I want to be enriched. This is what the Bible says by God. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 11, you will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion and through your generosity, it will result in thanksgiving to God. Amen. Look at the person next to you and say, we're a generous church. Come on. <laughs> Prophesy over them saying you're a generous person. Come on. And then look at your second choice and say, get off the sidelines. Come on, you're talented. Let them know. Say, you don't sing like Rodney, but I still believe you can probably do something. Amen. All right. Number four, another step in our journey to joy. You have to be intentional to place, number four, Jesus over your worries. Woo. Jesus over your worries. First Peter 5, 7 says, casting, I quoted it earlier, casting all your cares, all your anxieties, all your worries once and for all on him, for he cares about you with the deepest affection and watches over you very carefully. I love this quote. Worry never robs tomorrow of its sorrow. It only robs today of its joy. Worry never robs tomorrow of its sorrow or its struggles. It only robs today of its joy. Second Thessalonians chapter three, verse 16 says, now may the Lord of peace Grant you his peace. I love, no, 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 no. I'm gonna start over because I love this part. Now may the Lord of peace himself. I love that. He doesn't send like his B or C string like, hey, get down there and help her. She's losing her mind again. No, no, no. May the Lord of peace himself grant you his peace at all times and in every way that peace and spiritual well-being that comes to those who walk with him regardless of life's circumstances. The Lord be with you all. If you battle with worry, if you struggle with the battlefield of the mind, there was a book published by Joyce Meyer a long time ago that tackles worry, depression, anxiety, condemnation, and concern. We don't get any kickback from this, but you can go on Amazon and pick that book up. I've read through Battlefield of the Mind multiple times. There's a devotional connected to it. I'm telling you, if you struggle with this type of worry and panic, I felt this so strong. Worry and panic attacks and concern. I felt this so strong when I was driving over here today. Some of you this year have not experienced your breakthrough because you've been consumed by the situation of the person that broke you. And you haven't let that go and it's been literally consuming you and you've been worried and you've been concerned and you've been carried in. I, here's my prayer, is that today you would release that. You would release them, you would forgive them. It doesn't mean you need to go back around them, but you've been so consumed by someone who broke you that you haven't received your breakthrough. And I feel like today is a day of restoration. Come on, somebody. A day where he shows up and breathes new life into that. Romans 12, 2, talking about worry and do not conform to the patterns of this world, but by the renewing of your mind, then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, which is good, it's pleasing, and it's perfect. Winston Churchill said, when I look back at all these worries, I remember the story of an old man who said on his deathbed that he had a lot of troubles in his life, most of which never happened. What a powerful statement. Read that again. When I look back on all these worries, you know, they say statistically, three to 5% of what you worry the most about ever, ever, ever actually comes to pass. When I look back at all these worries, I remember the story of an old man who sat on his deathbed said he had a lot of troubles in his life, most of which never happened. If you struggle with worry, anxiety, panic, I want you to close your eyes for a moment across every campus. Lift your hands like this for a moment. God, this is my prayer today is that you would meet them where they're at. I pray, God, that a peace that surpasses all understanding, God, would reach down from heaven and touch the hearts of every mom, every dad, every son, every daughter, every brother, every sister. And as we redirect this worry, this concern, this anxiety, this fear. We put it in your hands, God. We're gonna stop monitoring what we've placed in your hands. Here it is, God. You're big enough to handle it. So we release this worry right now. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. All right, another step in the journey to joy. You have to be intentional to place Jesus over your plans. 
I've said this before. You ever want to make God laugh? Tell him your plans. <laughs> like, God, I know you have all these plans for me, and they're good. They're amazing. And even when I mess up and I'm frustrated and I fall down, I still trust you. Proverbs 16, 3 says, commit to the Lord. That's a discipline. That's a choice. And whatever you do, and he will establish your plans. Proverbs 16, 9, one of my favorite verses in the Bible. A man's mind plans his way as he journeys. We're in the journey of the joy. As he journeys through life, but the Lord directs his steps and establishes them. I mention this often, that God will never give you a life where he's not necessary. That's why we have to fully rely on, fully depend on, and recognize that every decision I make, I wanna make it as a God decision, and I wanna filter everything I do through, through the voice of God. We all want joy in our lives, right? That's the, per, the, the points of this entire s- series. We want peace in our life. We need Jesus over our plans. Every single time in the journey of my marriage, in the journey of our ministry, in the journey of leadership, every single time I've tried to do it in my own strength, every single time I've come up short. And every single time I feel like the Lord is just hovering over me like, hey, hey, would you like to include me now? Have you guys ever been there? Where you try to do it in your own strength, you're like, God's not answering my prayer quick enough, I'll just do it in my own strength. And then you get outside of the timing of what God wanted to do. See, I don't wanna be in front of God's will, behind God's will, I wanna be right smack dab in the middle of God's will, but we have to include him. Proverbs three, verses five and seven, I love the Amplified, it says, trust in, rely confidently on the Lord with all of your heart, and do not rely on your own insight or understanding. But in all your ways, acknowledge him, and recognize him, and he will make your path straight and smooth. This line right here in the Amplified, removing all the obstacles that block your way. This part right here steps on our toes, though. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Lay down that pride. Fear the Lord with reverent awe and obedience and turn entirely away from evil. Because here's the truth, y'all. In our own strength, in our own humanity, in our own sin nature, we can be wicked. That's when we start cutting corners with our integrity. We start blurring lines with our character. Just to make an extra buck, we'll climb the corporate ladder, we'll climb the rung, and we'll step on others. We'll stab others in the back to try to get promoted. Y'all, we have to allow Jesus to be over our plans. And here's my prayer. I don't wanna say it if you don't say it. I don't wanna step through that door, God, if you don't open it. And this is for somebody. I don't wanna be in that relationship if it's not ordained or established by you. Come on, look, look at the person next to you and say his plans are better than yours. I promise you that. Come on, his plans are so much better than yours. Okay, next one. Here's another step in our journey to joy, and we're bringing this in for a landing. You have to be intentional to place Jesus over your failures. You are not designed to carry this stuff. Some of you compartmentalize and hide the struggle. Everybody has skeletons. Everybody's got stuff. But we have to be intentional to place Jesus over our Failures. How many of y'all are grateful for the grace and the forgiveness and the unfailing love? Woo. You can clap a little bit better than that. I know some of y'all are messy. I know some of y'all are messy. You're like, I gotta shout louder than everybody else. Psalms 103, verses 11 through 13. For as, the, for as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his loving kindness towards those who fear. That's the same word we've been talking about with and worship him with awe-filled respect and deepest reverence. As far as the east from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Just as a father loves his children, so the Lord loves those who fear and worship him with awe-filled respect, and again, deepest reverence. The posture we have to take about Jesus over our failures is a posture of humility and surrender. Hebrews chapter four, verse 16 says, let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence. I love that the prodigal son came back and I'm sure he was sheepish and a little cowardly at one point, but when he saw his father's response, come home, I'll throw a party for you. We'll have Chick-fil-A. <laughs> I got Polynesian sauce. Some of you are like, is that in the message translation? Where do you get that from? Now, we have a confidence as King's kids to approach his presence, his throne of grace, 
so that we may, I love this line, receive mercy and find grace and help in our time of need. Lamentations chapter three, verse 22 and 23. Because of the Lord's great love. Watch this. We are not consumed. Ooh, I'm grateful for that. Because I'm telling you, as I read the Bible, if we serve the God who uh, smited Sodom and Gomorrah, I'm like, Lord, we're pretty messy now. Amen. No, no, because of his great love, we're not consumed. For his compassions never fail. What are they? They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I love the song, Great is Your Faithfulness. Jason, would you play it real quick? Y'all know the song? Great is your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All that I've needed, your hand, what does it do? Keeps providing. How many of y'all are grateful that every day you can wake up with the confidence that there's mercy for mistakes, grace for every goof up? Lord, unto thee, and my friend William McDowell wrote this song, I surrender all to you. Everything I give to you. This line right here, withholding nothing. It's a posture of surrender. Withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. Holding nothing. Would you stand to your feet for a moment and say that? Say, I surrender all. Come on, Jesus, over your failures. Everything. Holding nothing. Withholding nothing. Oh. I give it all to you. I give it all to you. Jesus. Come on, every voice. I surrender. I surrender all. Everything I give. I give, I give, I give to you. Withholding, withholding nothing. Here it is, oh God. So the last one today to unlock this, this journey to joy, we have to be intentional. Last one on the screen, to place Jesus over your heart. We have to be intentional to place Jesus over our hearts. If you've not surrendered your life to God, when we surrender our hearts to Jesus, true transformation begins to happen. I love what it says in Ezekiel 36, 26. It says, and I will give you a new heart. I will place a new spirit in you, and I will take out your stony, stubborn heart, and I'll give you a tender, responsive heart. So through these seven intentional Jesus over your family, your time, your plans, your resources, your worries, failures, it all comes back to him being the Lord of lords and the king of your heart. With every eye closed one more time, across every campus, if you're here today and you say, Pastor Daniel, one of those Jesus over your, ooh, that hit me. I'm not managing my time like I need to. I'm definitely not surrendering my plans. I've been struggling and consumed by worries and I've been overwhelmed by my failures. The truth is today, I wanna to commit my heart to him. The Bible says in Romans 10, verses nine and 10, that when we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that Jesus is Lord, everything changes. Whether you're at Katy, you're at Woodlands, you're watching online, we say yes to Jesus online. Our, our amazing team will help you there if you're in the room here, with the sound of my voice. Two invitations, the first one is, Pastor Daniel, I wanna know Jesus as my savior, I don't know him, but I want to, 
I wanna be intentional and have Jesus over every area of my life. But I don't know him like you're talking about. I wanna surrender my life to Jesus for the very first time. In a moment, I'm gonna count to three with boldness and confidence. We won't embarrass you. This costs you no money. This is a posture of surrender. And then we're all gonna pray a prayer together. The first invitation, I wanna give Jesus my entire life, I wanna surrender my heart to him and I wanna give my life to him for the first time. Or maybe you're the second invitation and maybe throughout this Jesus over your family, time, plans, worries, failures, all of this today, and the last one, him over my heart, maybe you would say, Pastor Daniel, I used to walk with him, but I got caught up in the, I got caught up in being selfish. I got caught up in the prodigal life and I wanna come home, but I felt like I'm not worthy I have felt like he wouldn't accept me again. Maybe the lie of the enemy has been that you're too far gone. I've got great news for you. Jesus is one mention of his name away from changing everything again. All he wants is surrender. That's the second invitation. One, I wanna give my life to Jesus. Two, I wanna rededicate my life. I wanna place Jesus over everything. Number three, lift up your hand if that's you. I'm looking all over the room. I'm looking all over the room. I see you. I see you, my friend, I see you, and you, I see you. I see you over here, and I see you here, and I see you here, and I saw you over there, and I saw you in the back. Come on, Hope City, give it up for all of our friends who said, today's my day across every campus. Amazing. I want you to say this out loud. Jesus, today, I'm surrendering everything. From this moment on, I'm gonna live for you. Here's my worries, here's my shame, it's all my fear, it's all my sin. I lay it at your feet and I ask for your forgiveness. I repent for all my struggles, even the things that are hidden. I give it all to you. Thank you, Jesus, for hanging on that cross, exchanging your life for mine so that I can live a life of freedom. You are my Father, you are my Savior, you are my Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, Hope City, make some noise.